my people are bent in backsliding from me. That's a, a habit with my people. That's the habit of all of Israel. You read the history and the story of Israel, one generation after another backsliding. Turn back, Israel. Turn back to the Lord, O backsliding Israel, for the Lord is married to you. You find this term all through the Bible, backsliding, turning back on God. God's people mostly backslide in times of prosperity and blessing. When God is blessing you, you've got his favor, that's the time to beware. That's the time that backsliding usually comes to God's people. The backslider, whether it's a he or she, is that child of God who has enjoyed the blessing and favor of the Lord, someone who's walked with God, devoted, loved the word of God, loved to pray, walked in holiness, gentle, kind perhaps, but now something has drawn the heart away. There's no more genuine love. The heart has grown cold in love toward the Lord. They no longer seek Him. They no longer go to His Word. Prayer is gone. They become foolish. They're without understanding. Their conversation changes. They don't talk the way they used to talk. There's a hard time getting them into the house of God. They don't testify of the love of Jesus to their friends or their co-workers anymore. They have grown cold and backslidden from the Lord. The Bible says it's a very evil and bitter thing to backslide against the Lord. Their own wickedness shall correct them. Their backsliding shall reprove them. Know therefore and see that it's an evil thing and a bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God and that his fear is no longer in you, saith the Lord of hosts. It's a terrible thing to try to sleep at night when you know you're running from God. And you remember being in the house of God. You remember being in meetings just like this. And here you are now trying to go to bed at night because you have compromised and you have turned your back and you're running away from the Lord. There's no rest to the wicked. There's no rest. Oh, there are a lot of people that have that deep sleep upon them. He's going to send a storm into your life and get you back. When you backslide, you become one of the most dangerous persons on earth. It's not just your problem. It's the problem of everybody that lives with you, walks with you, and knows you. You're a dangerous person because God's after you. You see, when you backslide, you don't only affect yourself, you affect the whole family because God sends storms. Backslidden Christians are sending a lot of people to hell on their jobs. You're going to be rebuked by the world. The world's going to stand up and rebuke you. This captain comes to Jonah fast asleep and he shakes him. You know what he said? What meanest thou, O sleeper? Rise and call upon God. A heathen captain commanding a preacher to get on his face. Get down and pray, preacher. You know, Paul, the apostle, he was on a boat that was tossed in a horrible hurricane. But he wasn't running from God. And that man could stand before all the devils of hell and he could stand on that rocking boat and say, don't worry, gentlemen, not one of you's going to be lost. I heard from God last night. My Lord told me we're all going to be saved. Jonah had no power whatsoever. He couldn't command the storm. He couldn't bring hope. He had no message. He had nothing. He was weak. He was a coward. And that's what sin does to you. It takes away your dignity. It takes away your strength. It takes away your power and makes you a coward before all mankind. God is going to take you down into the lowest pit known to man. You are going to be tossed and turned inside out, upside down. No one can escape this storm because God has a purpose. He's after you. Not to hurt you, not to kill you, but to deliver you and bring you back to his first love. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. After the storm comes the most critical, dark moment of your life. That's called the pit of despondency and despair. In this stinking mess of darkness and everything else, folks, that's a picture, backslider, of where you're headed. There's only two options. One, 
you give up to despondency. You say, well, well, God had a mission for him. No, God can find somebody else. God can find somebody else. Because we have our own free will. You can die in despondency. You can allow yourself to wallow in that fear and wallow in that guilt and condemnation and fear and you can die in it and go to hell. Or you can say, no, I've heard a message tonight, a message of hope, a message of strength and power in Jesus. I can come home. I can come back. When Jonah began to pray in the belly of the well, and I believe he had a revival meeting there. God moved on that well and swooshed him across the Mediterranean, got him up into the high places and took him out, landed that well near the shore and made him vomit. Out came a man of God, free, set free, anointed, back on schedule with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God restored everything that was destroyed and eaten. God restored it. God wants to restore everything the devil has taken from you. He wants to give everything back to you in good measure. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vow, thou shalt be my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not unto them. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. I will pull you out of the belly's well and I'll set you free.